in 2016, the Australian New Zealand authorities were assessing which studies were appropriate to be included in the assessment, looking at sort of assessment and assessment of fluoride. And they looked at the, the grade GRADE assessment. Are you familiar with that? That's through the WHO, I think, I believe. And okay. they, they decided with this assessment that fluorosis and dental caries were critical to, to decision-making, while neurocognitive and developmental disorders were important but not critical. They downweighted um, neuro, neurocognitive and developmental disorders. Do you think with the work you have undertaken and what your you and your colleague, colleagues are saying that we should be downweighting um, the, the neurodevelopmental, the cognitive effects of, of fluoride exposures for populations? Um, I've seen that happen uh, and I disagree. Uh, my, my background is that the World Health Organization asked me um, back in, um, I don't know, I don't remember the exact year, but uh, this is more than 25 years ago. They asked me to write the draft issue, uh, the draft document for the environmental health criteria for fluoride. And uh, I did so, I delivered it. And then they called an expert group to do the final assessment and, and whatever necessary adjustments. And uh, I was then considered part of the secretariat because I was the author of the draft document. Uh, and what happened was that the most of the experts that had been selected were had a dental background. Uh, some of them came from the WHO Office of Oral Health. And so uh, they criticized um, my, my draft uh, so when I said that fluoride was associated with adverse effects on this and that, uh, they added, but only in huge doses uh, and similar. And and in the end, uh, they they asked me if I would kindly go to the library and find a reference that uh, they thought was needed. And and so so they essentially asked me to leave the meeting. So uh, I said. I will leave the meeting and I won't come back. So I asked WHO to take my name off the document. And then they published a document uh, the way that the dental people majority would, would like to see it. And then they put another colleague's name on as uh, the, the uh, originator of the draft. And this was a colleague uh, who didn't know whose name was on the document and who had not been part of the process. Do you remember so, the title of this document? Um, yes, it's the Environmental Health Criteria document for fluoride. And, and that clearly showed that um, there were very strong oral health, uh, that is dental interests, and, and that they were not interested in, in looking at potentials for adverse effects, which is, of course, critical um, in certain areas of, of the planet. Uh, there are parts of East Africa that have very high levels in the drinking water, parts of China um, and several other countries. Um, and, and therefore, I think it, it's... Uh, uh, it's a disgrace uh, for a very limited uh, prevention interest to impose their wishes onto uh, situations uh, elsewhere where um, fluoride is clearly uh, an environmental health problem. And um, so anyway, I've maintained this uh, critique since, it's hap since it happened. And to me, that was a very strong indication that uh, the people who have taken responsibility for uh, adding fluoride to drinking water, uh, they are not always honest. And, yeah. and perhaps they are unwilling to admit that they made an error in the past. And, and I think that that's a very important 
um, a property uh, or talent, if you want, um, it, it's important that we allow our observations, we, we allow nature to uh, vote and that we rely on our documentation rather than our opinions uh, from the past that may be outdated. And, and that's what I think the fluoridation uh, decision is. It's outdated because now we have fluoridated toothpaste and, and we have lacquers. Uh, so it, it's, um, there's no need for uh, the fluoride in the drinking water. And, and um, as we now know, it, it's actually harmful. Yes, you, and you're so right. You know, because if we don't ex if we don't recognise this the, the toxicity, we can't look at the toxicity in the areas that are natural, yet, let alone the areas that are being fluoridated. And in New Zealand, PSGR observed that in the inquiry for the Director General, there was absolutely no endocrinologist, no one who had experience in neurodevelopmental toxicology, no one experienced at looking at low dose exposures. And in the, and, and the Australian and New Zealand, a lot of the risk assessment has gone on together. And from what I can see in the 2016, I need to understand the 2016 authors aren't really, their expertise is not declared. And then from 2017 onwards, there's a notional, you know, paediatric expert that has been interested in neuropsychology, but there's, there's no scientists that I would, I would dare say, have your expertise in this field. And we are seeing that they are oral and facial um, clinical experts, um, dental clinical experts. We're seeing exactly the same captured scope. And the, and the problem is science is as vulnerable to capture as, as, as anything else because it's ultimately a human endeavour. And so it's, it's about us sort of moving forward and, and helping, hoping to draw attention to these issues. So I, I very much thank you for your time. Um, Professor Philippe Cronjean, it's it's been such a pleasure talking with you. I wish you luck.